Get the vaccine, get protection for you and give protection to everyone around you. What are vaccines? Vaccination is the most important thing we can do to protect ourselves and our children against ill health. Since vaccines were introduced in the UK, diseases like smallpox, polio and tetanus that used to kill or disable millions of people are either gone or seen very rarely. However, if people stop having vaccines, it's possible for infectious diseases to quickly spread again. Are we sure it's safe? In the UK, there are currently three types of vaccine that have had approval. Each has been shown to be effective. And no safety concerns were seen in studies of more than 20,000 people. Yes, but it was developed so quickly. The vaccine trials didn't skip any of the usual safety steps. Instead, some of the stages overlapped. Also, side effects usually show up quite quickly after vaccination and longer term effects are extremely rare, much, much rarer than long term side effects of the virus. Usually vaccine trials are slowed down by long periods of waiting around, applying for permission, funding and staff capacity. It's those elements that were sped up because of the huge global interest in doing so. But drug companies stand to make a lot of money. Can we trust them? Approval is only given in the UK if the regulator, the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency, is happy that a vaccine is both safe and effective. Other regulators around the world have also approved the vaccines. Will a vaccine make me ill? Vaccines do not give you a disease. Instead, they teach your body's immune system to recognise and fight the infection they've been designed to protect against. Some people do suffer mild symptoms after being vaccinated, such as muscle aches or a raised temperature. This is not the disease itself, but the body's response to the vaccine. Does it affect pregnancy? The current COVID vaccines do not contain organisms that can multiply in the body, so they cannot infect an unborn baby in the womb. Evidence from non-clinical studies of the Pfizer vaccine and of the AstraZeneca vaccine have raised no concerns and there's no evidence that vaccines can affect fertility or babies that are breastfed. Then why are pregnant women not being asked to take the vaccine? Because the vaccines have not yet been tested directly amongst a larger number of pregnant women. Until the information is available, those who are pregnant should not routinely have the vaccine. However, some pregnant women that are at high risk from COVID may be advised by their GP to get the vaccination because the risk from the virus is far, far bigger than the risk, if any, from the vaccine. How animal friendly are vaccines and do they contain alcohol? The COVID vaccines from Pfizer, Moderna and AstraZeneca do not contain any animal products. The British Islamic Medical Association recommend people to have the vaccine and stress there is negligible alcohol in it. 
no more than in bread, for example. I had COVID and recovered. Why should I get vaccinated? People will still be offered the jab, even if they've had the virus in the past. That's because natural immunity may not be long lived and immunisation could offer more protection. If everybody gets vaccinated, surely I don't need to bother. We need as many people as possible to get vaccinated, not just to protect yourself, but because of herd immunity, to protect those around you. There is a mass of scientific evidence that vaccination is the best defence against serious infections. COVID vaccines appear to stop people getting very sick and could save lives. But I'm young and healthy. What difference does it make if I don't have the vaccine? It's not yet clear how much protection vaccines might give in terms of stopping people from spreading COVID. However, if they can do this well, vaccinating enough people would stamp out the disease. That would mean that all our lives would get back to normal. So a fit young healthy person whose risk from COVID is low is helping people around them by having the vaccine. After I've had the vaccine, will I still need to follow the rules on social distancing? While two doses of the vaccine will reduce your chance of becoming seriously ill, no vaccine is completely effective. And it will take a few weeks for your body to build up protection. To protect yourself, your family, friends and your colleagues, you should continue to follow the general advice at work, home and when you are out and about. Practice social distancing. Wear a face covering. Wash your hands carefully and frequently. When will I get the vaccine? Wait to be contacted. You can book an appointment when you've received a letter from the health service inviting you to book your vaccine. The NHS will let you know when it's your turn and it's important not to contact the NHS for a vaccination before then. You must have an appointment and cannot just turn up at a vaccination centre. It's a free vaccination and you will not be charged. Letters are being sent out each week by the NHS, so you should not worry if you've not received one yet. You will also need to be registered with a GP surgery in England. If you are not, you can register through how to register with a GP surgery NHS, www.nhs.uk. Who can get the COVID vaccine? The NHS is currently offering the vaccine to people most at risk from coronavirus. This includes older adults, frontline health and social care workers, care home residents and staff, and those with certain clinical conditions. When more vaccine becomes available, the vaccines will be offered to other people at risk as soon as possible. Does testing and isolating still matter if vulnerable people are getting vaccinated? We cannot go back to normal too soon. 
Scientists estimate that 70 to 80% of the population need to be vaccinated before we start to see herd immunity. That won't happen until the summer. We don't know if the vaccine prevents the spread of the virus from one person to another. This means even if the majority of at-risk groups are vaccinated, they could still spread the virus. While older people and those with certain clinical conditions are more at risk from hospitalisation from COVID, we need to protect everyone until we have stamped out the virus completely. Research suggests around one in five people who test positive for COVID have symptoms for five weeks or longer. For around one in 10 people, they last 12 weeks or longer. This is called long COVID. The symptoms include fatigue, breathlessness, anxiety and depression, chest pains and muscle pain. <laughs>